So, you, <laughs> you may tell I'm not in my apartment in Los Angeles. Um, I'm back in my hometown, um, living with my mom. Um, sorry, it's just it's a bit of a hard video to make. Um, but it needs to be made, and what better time and place than in my bathroom at five in the morning? Um, I just I, I need to clue y'all in of what's what's going on. Um, okay. Um, so. Over the past few months, I have really been struggling with my depression and not in the sense of sadness per se, you know, that was kind of how it was when I was younger, but now that I'm older, it's more just the willingness to function normally and just live, you know. Um, I mean, I'm not saying like breathing living, but like going out and doing things living. And um, it's, it's, uh, it's been tough. Um, you know, I wouldn't go to school for weeks and I wouldn't talk to anyone, I would turn off my phone, I would just, I would shut out the world, and um, it just kind of left me alone with myself and my thoughts, and that just kind of made it worse. Um, but as some of you probably knew, my 21st birthday was about a month ago, and um, for anyone who's out of the U.S., I know a few of my friends are, um, you know, that's when you're legally allowed to drink and being depressed, um, it just wasn't a good mix. Um, I've been drinking for a long time. I mean, I think I first started drinking when I was about 16. Um, but it, it's never been readily available, and... I never thought it was a problem, and I never thought I just, I just never thought I had such a problem. And when my birthday came around, and it being a time in my life where I've just had horrible downs and just some of the worst fits of anxiety that I've ever had. Um, it was, it was just the perfect storm, you know, and, um, I really would like to apologize for my absence from, you know, social media and from my channel, obviously. I mean, I, I started this channel, God, now probably about a year ago, because I think it was like November of last year that I started, um, I really started doing YouTube seriously, and, um. I've kind of fallen short of my, at least my own expectations of this channel and myself personally. Um, and I feel like I need to apologize to you guys for that, um, at least. I mean, I, I, I'm still working it out, you know, within myself. Um, I'm in therapy. I mean, I've been in therapy for the last couple of years, but I'm focusing more now on the problems with drinking and with my depression. And I'm seeing a psychiatrist finally for the first time. Um, I mean, I was, I was diagnosed with depression when I was 13, I think. And it wasn't really given a real name until I was about 18 or 19. And it was, I was diagnosed as bipolar and, um, and uh, having a severe anxiety disorder 
and um, and then uh, yeah, but um, I'm uh, finally getting that all in check. I've been put on medication. Um, I have to go back to my psychiatrist next week to discuss an anxiety medication because the anxiety has gotten much worse um, to the point where I couldn't leave my apartment. Um, I have yet to really leave my mom's house. I um, just, I just don't feel comfortable outside, even just going to get the mail, you know, just a few yards away from the house just kind of makes me shut down. Um, I, I really am just making this video right now as an apology to my friends, really, and to myself, too. I mean, I, you know, I could easily just make this a Facebook post or just some, you know, some spiel on Twitter, but... I need to hear these words come out of my mouth. I need to admit to the things that I've done and I need to just have it logged away, you know, to where, you know, a year, two years, five years down the line, I can look back and I can see this and hopefully see where I came from and improve on that. Because that's the whole point of me being back here at home because, because I failed at just being by myself during all this. Um, so to kind of explain what happened, um, I came home for two weeks for my birthday. Um, because generally when I come home, I like to come home for about two weeks because that gives me, you know, about a week to chill and then a week to where I can go see my friends, go get new tattoos, do anything I like to do back home. Uh, that I don't do in LA. Um, but we also, we as in me and my mother, we decided that this was also a, a perfect opportunity because I did admit to her, you know, I was having major issues and struggling with my depression, is that I would start seeing a psychiatrist and hopefully get on medication. Um, so we started that when I came back. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know, when you do get put on antidepressants, you're not supposed to drink because it, uh, it because alcohol is a depressant and if you're on an antidepressant you basically just can't properly level out you can't really feel not the difference but it just it kind of cancels out um, uh, so it, it was it was definitely a bummer because I turned 21 so for about a week I was able to drink <laughs> uh, before being put on medication um, so I you know I just enjoyed it I never got hammered or anything um, I really lost control in that time um, and uh, excuse me I do have a cold right now um, uh, and excuse the poor sound like I said I'm in my bathroom um, I just kind of needed a quiet place to do this. Um, so, like I said, when you're on antidepressants, you're not allowed to drink. So, I was really bummed about that. But, like I said, I never really thought I had a problem with alcohol. And I didn't expect it to be a problem. So, you know, when I went back to Los Angeles... I was planning on staying for about three weeks, um, because I, as, I mean, you guys know, I was planning huge cosplays, I mean huge from my standards, huge cosplays for Kamikaze, and, um, uh, you know, I had the gothic Lady Am uh, Amalthea, and, um, I was gonna do two days as Mortimer, um, two separate outfits because I couldn't really decide on which one I wanted to do. 
So fuck it, I'll just do two. Um, plus then that way it's nice and chill and it's real hot in LA right now, so. Um, just wanted to kind of take it easy and just have fun because Kamikaze is special, to me at least, because that was my first convention that I went to with just Kath, Kathy and Nisa. You know, that was just really special for me because it was also very last minute when I went last time because Kathy just surprised me with a ticket and it was just, it, it was just really special and, you know, I really wanted to be there again and, um, I wanted to be there and, you know, I'd already put hundreds of dollars in towards my cosplays, you know, I had almost everything for Lady Amalthea, I had everything for Susie and just... It was going to be so perfect. So, in good faith, I was supposed to go for three weeks, be in L.A., do the convention, and then I was going to fly home on Halloween, which was the day after the convention ended, and stay in Texas for November and December so my mom could just keep, keep an eye on me while I'm on my me medication and just... Um, because my doctors are also here in, in Texas, because, um, my, uh, it's actually, just kind of adult talk right now, it's, my insurance is shit out in L.A., I don't know why, it's really hard for me to find a doctor in L.A., um, but yeah, uh, that's another talk for another day, um, uh, where's I going with this, uh, there's a million thoughts in my head right now, I'm just trying to organize them, but, um, uh, yeah, so I got home Sunday uh, at like, I think it was like midnight-ish, maybe one in the morning, because I always fly at night, I like flying at night, it's more comfortable for me, um, <laughs> You know, it's quiet on the plane, it's dark, I can sleep, and just things like that. But, um, uh, I got home, and I was extremely stressed because, you know, the flight was just kind of rough for me, it was rough for Heidi, because if y'all don't know, I, whenever I fly home, I have to take my cat with me because she can't be alone, and just, I prefer to have her with me, and just, but flying with a cat is so difficult, especially Heidi, and, um, I was just really stressed out and then I found out apparently like Uber and Lyft don't pick up from the airport anymore unless you go to arrivals instead of, I don't know, it's just a fucked up thing. So I had to take a taxi and it smelled like piss and the guy didn't speak any English and it was just, oh, it, was a stress, it was a stressful, stressful night and when I was, when we put, when he pulled up to my apartment, my credit cards got declined and I had no cash. And I was freaking out, and thank God Wells Fargo had a 24-hour call, like, hotline. So I got cleared, paid for the cab, and just, oh, God, I spent like a half hour in the back of that guy's cab just trying to figure it out. But I did, and um, I was just so tired and so stressed. And for some reason, my first thought was, go get alcohol and calm down. And I did that, like, without even thinking, you know, without remembering. And I guess maybe it's just because I'm not used to having medication. I was just not thinking about it. But I immediately just put everything in my apartment and then got in my car and went and bought booze. I, um, went and bought an 18-pack of beer and just, I sat in my bedroom and I drank six and fell asleep with one in my hand and then I woke up and just immediately just without even thinking just drank the one that was in my hand and then just kept drinking and then I'd fall asleep sober up and just I just kept drinking and this happened for about four days where I would go out buy a 12 pack buy a couple bottles of wine and just drink all day and I even bought a bottle of whiskey and um I uh, some people probably don't know this or probably I don't think anybody knows this I because I have been drinking for so long I would drink liquor a lot 
um, uh, I had had a, it was actually my birthday last year, my 20th birthday, I drank a bottle of rum by myself and I got alcohol poisoning and ever since then I haven't been able to drink liquor. And I just thought, eh, it's been a year, maybe I can try again. I took one tiny sip of the whiskey and just threw up. And I just poured it out and I just couldn't do it. Um, so that happened. But just for four days, it was just beer and wine and beer and wine and beer and wine. And just, I felt so sick. But I didn't care. I just didn't care. And you know, Thursday came around and I was too sick to leave my apartment. And I just called my mom and I told her, I'm sick, I need help. You know, I needed her to fly out and help me because I legitimately thought I was going to die because it, you know, every one of my organs just felt like it was they were stone and just sinking in my body and my heart was beating so slow and I was just, I was so, so scared. Like, and in no exaggeration, I really thought I was gonna die. And I did joke one time in the past that I felt like I had no purpose in life, you know, I've tried to commit suicide so many times in the past and failed, I mean, obviously, because I'm still here, you know, and I was just, there was just one time where I was joking and I just said, when I turn 21, I'll just drink myself to death, you know, maybe that's my purpose, just to die young and go out having fun. You know, but I called my mom and she booked me a flight for the next day. And, um, you know, my bags were still packed. I hadn't even unpacked. Everything was still in my suitcases. I hadn't taken anything out. It was all still there. And I just zipped everything up, got Heidi back in her carrier. I got as far as my front door and I collapsed. I just, I had one of the worst panic attacks of my life. I was screaming and crying and I called my mom and I just, I was so, I was, I was still sick. I was still very sick and um, from what I read into it is it, I had alcohol poisoning again and just, I've had alcohol poisoning now three times in my life. And it just, it never dawned on me that three times is too many. And not to mention, it was three times in the past year. It wasn't even really my life. It was in the past year I've had alcohol poisoning three times. <laughs> and this last time I really thought I was going to die. But I called her and I was shaking and crying and I was so scared. I was just so scared. So mom flew out, but I was so rattled from the panic attack that yet again, my first instinct was go get something to drink. And literally all I had been drinking was alcohol. I hadn't had any water, or juice, nothing. I just, I would literally just go out, get some alcohol, get some frozen, you know, like a frozen dinner, just because you, know, you can't drink on an empty stomach or you get really sick. Um, but I'd eat like one meal a day just to rationalize it all, you know. I go, I eat, I eat something. It was bad. It was really bad. 
But I went out, I bought another 12 pack, two bottles of wine, and I drank it. And then when mom got there, I was drunk and still so sick. And I, I still did it. Even though mom was on her way, I still did it. And I just. You know, come morning, I wake up sober and I look in the mirror and I'm covered with bruises. You know, my shins were covered in bruises, my arms all over, just huge, huge bruises. And y'all probably know this about me, I don't know. I don't bruise easily. Um, the only times I've had bruises before this was when I broke my big toe. I broke it clean in half and when my ex-boyfriend tried to break my hand and and uh, destroy a bunch of the nerves in my hand um, and uh, twisted the tendon. Um, those are really the only times I've ever had bruises. But I just don't remember anything really besides drinking. I just I have no memory of those, like, I just, I just, I blacked out those four days, or five days, I guess, because of Friday, but I have no memory of what I did beyond just drinking. So I just woke up covered in bruises. I have cuts all over my left knee because I do remember that. I took a bottle cap one of the beers and I just started slashing my knee. I don't I don't know why, but I did. And then I went in my room and I have sliding closet doors that are mirrors and I went in there and one of my mirrors was just completely shattered. It was just it was shattered. It just I just don't remember any of it. I don't know how it happened. I don't know if something fell against it because I had my suitcases in front of it or if I slammed it too hard and it shattered but and I mean this may all just seem like useless facts or events but it's just like I said I have to say these things you know I have to get it out because you know down the line if I look back at this and I don't remember this happening but I hear myself saying it, then I remember, you know, like, I really admit that I did something wrong. But yeah. So, I was only back in LA for about a week, and then I had to go home. And mom took care of me while I was drying out, basically. Uh, since then, I haven't had a drop of alcohol. I definitely have wanted to drink. I still want to drink. I want to so bad, you know, because I think, I guess I like drinking because I don't have to think, you know, the thoughts that go a mile, you know, a hundred miles a minute, they stop and I can just enjoy the moment because I've never really been able to do that. And especially because of the anxiety and the depression. Um, and many of y'all do know this, and for the few that don't, I was a drug addict for two year, almost two years, probably closer to a year and a half. I um, smoked synthetic marijuana or spice. Um, and, uh, I, I had that, you know, that, that came before the alcoholism and just, that was the same thing, you know, I just wanted to enjoy the moments and stop the thoughts and it was a real problem and looking back now, it should have been a sign, you know, a warning sign that alcohol probably would have been a problem too because I was an addict to something already.
them. But uh, since February 7th, 2015, they've been clean. And what was that Saturday? So that was Saturday. I have to look it up, but um, maybe I'll put it on screen or something. But of that of that Saturday, I've been sober, and I plan on keeping it that way because I'm an alcoholic, admittedly, and I was a drug addict, admittedly, and. These are things I need to admit and accept because that's the first, it's the first step to getting better and, you know, getting through this. But I do apologize for letting y'all down and not, not being open about it and you know, not cluing you all in sooner. It's just, I have to accept it first and then I can let you all in again. <laughs> but, um, that's the long short of it. <laughs> I guess it isn't a little squishy video unless it's over 20 minutes long. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's what's been going on. Um, like I said, I'm in Texas. I'm with my mom. And I'm getting help. There are brighter days ahead. I know there are. And I want to say this to anyone watching. That, you know, if you suffer from depression or anxiety, you know, it's kind of cliche to say. But... God damn, go out and get help, man. If you need it, get help. Because it is never, ever, ever a sign of weakness. It takes so much strength to realize when you have a problem. And when you realize you're not living your life. And you realize that there's something impeding your life. It takes so much strength to say, you know, I'm not perfect. To say I am human, you know, um, and there's no cure for depression, there's no cure for anxiety, no cure for alcoholism or drug addiction, but there's ways of getting better, and there's always a way to get better, and I promise you that. Life can get better, but it starts with you. And I hope, like I said, anyone listening, just just go and get help any way you can. You will always have family and you will always have friends that are willing to help you. No matter what you may think or believe or whatever you convince yourself to believe, because I was the same way. I'm 21. I've had depression. The first time I tried to kill myself, I was 10 years old. So I can say, you know, I was depressed since I was 10. So 11 years, I thought no one cared. I thought no one wanted to help. You know, I thought there was no way of helping. I never, you know, I had tried antidepressants before and they never worked. And just, you know, I've been to three different therapists. I finally found one that works. You know, one that really listens to me and cares about me and wants to see me get better. You know, I found a psychiatrist that's a great doctor. You know, he really cares, he really listens, and just... You just have to find what works. And it's all trial and error, and... The road is long and difficult, but... My God, when you find that light at the end, it is so beautiful. It is so beautiful, and the clarity is so beautiful, and just... It will get better. It's, like I said, it's cliche as that sounds. It will get better. There is help. There is... There is light. And people find it in different things, you know? Some people find it in religion, in family, in friends. You know, or just finding a hobby. But there, 
there's always something. There's always something. But, um, oh god, 30 minutes long now. I'm so sorry. I'll stop rambling. Um, I love you guys. Just always know that. Um, again, if you don't hear from me, it's just because I might be having a down day or just, you know, need to tune out and just focus on myself and fix some things. Um, yeah, love you guys. Have a good day, week, month, and year. You deserve it. Bye.